The F-14, I've had um, 15 flights on it now, uh, quite successful flights. And uh, as you can see, we log all our flights. I'm using uh, two of the Bonker brand 5200 6S LiPo's. They're saying 45C, but guys, seriously, they, they puff up, Not, nothing like a 45C. I'd say they're more like 25C, so you'd be the judge on that one. And they've got fairly thin wires on them, but it is only an 80mm setup, so it is handling it quite well. But if I put them in one of the high power setups in the 90mm stuff, they puff. So, anyway, so you know, what sort of flight times can you expect to get out of the uh, F14 with the old power setup you're using? Well, with these um, batteries, they're 5200 milliamp each. Um, I've got the timer set on my Spectrum radio for anything over 5% throttle, it comes on. I've got it set for four and a half minutes and quite normally for me the timer will go off and then I'll think about circuit and landing so I'm getting about five minutes 15 in actual engine run time and flight time a little bit over that if I throttle manage and uh, usually about 20 to 25 percent left in the batteries which I think is quite acceptable it's not damaging the batteries but not bad for an EDF. So two That's in there impressive. you can see there's plenty of room in the battery bay and thanks to RC Geek online, um, he's got some great setup tips with this. I pretty much followed what he said and I've cut out the battery bay to allow the batteries to go as far back as possible to get the C or G right. I've also done his programming and uh, took it basically straight off the, um, the net. And it's all in his comments there, you can actually download it straight away onto my DX9 and I made a few little alterations as I kept flying it I found that I liked a little bit less roll here, a bit more elevator there, but they're only minor changes. I think it's a good starting point. Um, there's a bit of voodoo around about it, isn't there, Scotty, about the F-14? There is, yeah. You see a lot of guys on YouTube uh, not having the best of luck with them, unfortunately. That's right. Um, I, f I can understand why. They're six and a half kilos flying weight. It's, uh, it is a big aircraft, and you've got to understand how heavy aircraft fly. I think a lot of guys make the mistake of thinking it's a light foamy and start throwing it around a bit. Uh, they don't probably handle the, the, the weight of it. But once you get it moving, it's fantastic. It flies beautifully, especially with the wings out. Wings swept, I find it gets a little bit of an oscillation going that you don't really want. So I'm going to trial a free wing gyro in it shortly. I'm just waiting for a few little parts to turn up so I can allow that to happen. Um, I find it's got a great flight envelope, slow, fast, it does everything really well and it's just managing that extra weight I suppose is what catches a lot of people out. With the wings swept, if you try and do a lot of aerobatic manoeuvres, yeah, I can see where people come undone. Once you get it on its back, it feels like you haven't got enough down elevator. People could quite easily panic and start pulling back stick and find it straight into the ground pretty quickly. It does noticeably speed up when the wings are swept. so. Look at that. I'll just plug in uh, one battery. So and the rear battery here, and then we'll put the undercarriage down and sweep the wings. So guys, little tip with free wing. If you're plugging in for the first time of the day and you've been storing it with the wheels up, have your undercarriage switch down. It stops anything from cycling. It stops the gear doors from cycling or anything silly happening. When you want to use the undercarriage, get it off the ground, click it one way, then back the other, and then the gear will come down. And you won't have any issues with gear doors getting smashed. And then swing wings. Beautiful model, it has great presence in the air, and like I say, I find it flies really, really well, so can't wait to get out there and show you.